What's up everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I wanted to explore the topic of resilience in dating. I am in a dating phase of my life where I am looking for the person who is going to be my long-term life partner. And that's a loaded thing. <laughs> you know, when you are are in this journey, if you're someone who desires that, then you know that is a very loaded thing. And it comes with expectations, with unlearning traumas, with addressing things, with speaking your truth, with being willing to walk away from situations that don't fit what you envision, with also being flexible, with being surprised by things that you do want that you didn't know that you wanted or vice versa, being surprised at things that were given to you that you find out that you actually don't want. And so it is a process. It's not black and white and there's a lot of gray area with it. There is also a lot of frustration with it. (laughs) So I peruse the Reddit forums or subs, I think is what they're called, sub threads, subs every now and then. And one of those subs that I peruse is around dating. And one of the things that comes up a lot is this frustration, this feeling of burning out, of being burnt out from dating. And in my own experience, I have felt this too, where it feels like there's a lot of highs and lows. You get meet someone, get very excited, and then things don't work out, deal with a heartbreak or a disappointment, and then it just keeps happening. And what I've had to learn throughout these years of dating is that if I'm going to get to my goal, I'm going to have to learn resilience. I'm going to have to learn how to date in a way that is sustainable so that I am not burning out. And what this has come down to for me is learning how to balance that initial excitement that I have for a potential relationship with remaining present. It can be so easy and y'all, I still, I still struggle with this at times to meet someone Things seem really great, getting so excited, start projecting out all of these fantasies and thinking about what the potential and what the future could look like. And then when things unfold as they do, and it doesn't match that, being very disappointed. I've played this out in therapy. And what I have learned is that I might have mentioned this in a previous episode. Part of my challenge in dating is that I was seeking for attention and validation in ways that I was not giving to myself. And so there were core needs that I had that I sought to be fulfilled in romantic relationships that I felt like I couldn't fulfill myself. And when you are dating from a space like that, you will take anything that somebody gives you. You'll be desperate because your cup is not full. So I'm out here trying to fill my cup and I have my blinders on regarding the things that I really need to be looking out for. Things like, is this a good person? Does this person want what I want? And not masking over that or glossing over that with the hopes that this person will somehow transform into that at some point. That way of dating has never worked out for me and has left me so heartbroken at times and frustrated and angry. And I've had moments where I specifically wanted to tap out of dating. I had moments where I would think to myself, Maybe I should just give up. Maybe dating, maybe a long-term relationship is not for me. And I, I would find myself through that cycle 
when these things, when these relationships would end, I'd be very heartbroken and that would have me spiraling into that thought process of maybe this is just not something that is destined for me. But there's always been a part of me and always will be a part of me that desires that. And so when the opportunity does come about for me to meet someone else and things to click, that same rush of excitement comes back. And as I have dated over the years and gone to therapy and healed myself from past traumas and learned what it means to have boundaries and to fulfill my own needs, one of the other things that I've also learned has been around resilience and sustainability. And so what that has looked like for me is in recent situations, there's two guys that I'll think of that I'll refer to. One guy, I met him just randomly off the cuff. I was at a party and I met him and he approached me and at first I didn't even pick up that he was hitting on me. I gave it a moment and then it was clear to me that he was hitting on me. And so we were having a good chat, a good vibe back and forth. And at the end of that night, he wanted to progress things forward into a direction that I didn't want to go. I expressed to him that that's not what I wanted to do, that he could, you know, I I respect if that's what he wants. But for me, that's not what I want. He said he respected that. And then we went our separate ways. We were connecting again, texting, that kind of thing. And again, he went to that topic. So at that point, I really struggled with, do I tell this man that, you know what, I'm done? Or do I give him one more clear, like talking to, you know, just one way another moment of being very firm around where I stand with this and I decided you know what fine I'm going to have one more moment where I am firm with this man and make it very clear that if this happens again he should not be a surprise if I walked away now you can probably guess where things ended up at he tried me again y'all he tried me again and he got cut off and that's been the end of that but I can still say in that situation, I still had some appreciation for the initial moment that I had with him. The initial moment that I had with him, it just felt good. It felt good to be desired. It felt good to be desired at that point from, at that point, I was thinking someone who could match me intellectually. It just, it felt so nice. And I was reminded all those fe- of all those feelings that you have when you're dating someone. For someone like me, it takes a few, it takes a few months sometimes to meet someone. And so when someone does finally show up, it becomes like this refreshing reminder of like, oh, this is what this feels like. And so that was a moment for me where in the past, if something like that would have happened, one, I wouldn't have set the boundary. I'm pretty sure that I would have let this man continue doing what he was doing and just crossing my boundaries. And that would have led to resentment and frustration and anger. But where I'm at now mentally, I was able to see that appreciate the moment that I had with him, but also cut it off and know that there's something better in my future. Now, this may seem like an obvious one. Let's go to guy number two. Guy number two was someone I met on a dating app. And I would still to this day say that he's a good, good quality guy from what I know. I didn't know him that long, but from what he presented to me, he seemed like a good quality guy. I went on a first date with him and after that first date, I wrote down a list of green flags and yellow flags and if there were any red flags. 
this is something I want to pause here because when I share this with my friends, they're like, what do you mean green flags? I have decided that I want to make more of an effort of emphasizing or placing some type of acknowledgement on the positive in someone. Not in a way where I completely gloss over the negative, but I do want to explicitly acknowledge the positive. So I have green flags on top of what everybody knows as red flags. And I have my yellow flags, things that let me let me pay attention to that. I want to understand that more. This guy had a lot of green flags, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And throughout the process of dating him, it was a really good test to see how far I had come along in dating. There were tests of if he didn't text me, how was I going to feel? How was I going to express myself in in certain moments? When he did ultimately decide that he was not in a space to date, how was I going to receive that? And at the end of things, I found myself a little sad, yes, but also appreciative of the experience because it was a test that I needed. And what those two experiences have solidified for me is this idea that yes, I can be excited for what potentially may come, but I also am prepared to cut things off if I need to. And if someone cuts things off for me, with me, I can walk away with my grace and my dignity. If you knew the history of how I used to respond in these situations, you would understand just the magnitude of being me being able to not only say that, but also prove it to myself. To be able to prove to myself that I'm out of a space of desperation where I'm willing to allow someone to cross my boundaries just to have someone in my life. That was guy number one. And I'm also out of a space where if someone decides to walk out of my life, I'm no longer begging and pleading and trying to convince them that, no, I want them to make this work. Both these individuals can exist where they are and I can exist where I am. And neither one of those experiences left me exhausted, left me frustrated or any of that. And so going back to this idea of resilience and sustainability, When I think about it, I think of being grounded and being centered and being really affirmed about where I'm at and where I'm going and anchoring myself in that such that if things are coming in, going out, coming in, going out, I'm not swayed by that. I'm anchored. I know exactly where I want to be and where I'm at presently. And so in both of these situations, these men floated in and out of my life, but it didn't disrupt me in a way that now it's like, oh, I made all these sacrifices or I envisioned this whole future with this person and now what am I going to do? And none of that. But I was also able to enjoy the experience for what it was. In the past, what would happen is I would enjoy one moment and then I'd jump 20 steps ahead and I'd be waiting. I'd I'd be waiting for the guy to catch up to me. And I wouldn't be able to enjoy the time hopefully building the relationship because in my mind, there was already a relationship to be had. It was just he needed to get where I was. Undoing that way of dating has saved me so much in these experiences. Now, this doesn't mean that I give a pass for men to just do as they please. Clearly, I would hope that this is illustrating. I'm not just letting men do as they please in my life. But what it is to say is I've come to a place where I can now be present in what is and also 
look for the values and the character character traits in somebody that gives me a better idea of if they are walking along that path as well. I'm no longer in the business of convincing potential partners to walk a path with me. I'm walking my path and either you gonna walk with me or you gonna walk away, but I'm anchored and I'm centered in, in that, I'm going to walk my path. So something to consider If you are finding yourself exhausted in dating, if you're finding yourself in a place where you're just burnt out, one, consider taking a break. I've been that person who's been on like five different dating apps. And when you get messages from so many of the wrong people, it is draining. It is absolutely draining. So consider taking a break. That's fine. Do you really want to go on a date with someone and and be counting down the time or be, you know, on the lookout for things that could go wrong? Not that we shouldn't look out for the red flags, but what space, so going into number two, consider what space it is that you want to ideally date from. Do you want to date from a place of fear, of frustration, of desperation, Or do you want to date from a place of curiosity where you can go on these dates and just be curious of of who this person is? You know what you want and you know you're going to walk away if somebody crosses your boundaries or is not aligned to that. So as long as you are rooted in that, you can be open to any of these experiences because you know you'll close yourself off from the one that is not for you. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening and I'll talk to you in my next one.